Hi, Mark Stedman from Podiant here with a quick video on how to edit and mix a podcast episode with Apple's Logic Pro 10. So Logic is not, by design, meant for podcasts. You can use something like GarageBand and maybe graduate to Logic, but if you already own Logic because you're editing music or mixing music, or you want something that's a little bit more advanced, but you don't want to go for the subscription with something like Adobe Audition, Logic is not a bad place to start. So with that in mind, let's get cracking. So the first thing we're going to do is open Logic. And I'm going to hit Command and N to start a new project. Move that window over here. And we'll go with just the basic blank project. I've got the audio tab selected and I know that we're going to use four channels. And let's label these. So we'll call this intro and outro. We'll call this one host. This one guest. And we'll call this one music. I'm now going to import files that I want to use. So we'll start off with our, our vocals. And then we'll put our music in. Now on my Mac with the option key held down, I'm going to just scroll my mouse finger up so that I can expand this. Now we can get a bit of a, a bird's eye view of our episode. You can see it's quite short, but I'm going to take that outro and I'm just going to move it over there. So I know that I want to get my intro to start maybe about there. And I want to make sure that these bits of audio are just lined up. Now I can do this visually because I can see here, this is obviously where the conversation is flowing. And there's a handy little shortcut that I can do in Logic. If I want to move everything to the right, I can select one of these tracks, hit Shift and F, and then everything I drag, when I move it, it also moves everything else. So I'll show you that again. If I move this back, you can see that it's moving the outro as well, which is really handy if you want to move something early on in the proceedings. So I can take this intro and I can move it about there. But because the music came beforehand, it's not getting moved. Okay, so I'm going to position my intro about there. So we've got all this music here. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the output volume of the music and just take it down by three decibels, which is a generally good rule of thumb with music. Now, I'm happy with the volume of all of these clips, but if you're not, then you can change the gain on the channels. You can also use the mixer and we'll cover the mixer in just a little bit. I'm now going to do something called an automation. So I'm going to hit the A key. And when I select this track, I can now click, let's say, about here and here. And these little dots now create what we call an envelope, which is essentially an instruction to turn down the volume. So now I'm happy with that. What I probably want to do is cut the music and we'll do that maybe about here. And I'm going to press Command and T to split the clip into two. Just press delete. And now if I go back into the automation, I can put another little dot here. And one there. We've got a dot there that we can get rid of. So that will create a very, very simple fade. So 
So I'm happy with all of this. This all seems fine. Lovely interview. And then towards the end, let's just move that, scooch that on a little bit. Now, I know there's a bit of a mistake in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position my playhead here. I'm going to hit Command and T, get rid of all of that, and then just drag this to the left. fact we can do a little bit more and then that's a bit of a long gap there so let's just drag that to the left this sort of shape here is indicating that there's a crossfade happening between the two clips now since it's silence that doesn't really bother us but it's useful to know that the left hand side of the clip is fading out you can see the arc going down as the right hand side of the clip is fading up. So that is the basic editing done. I'm going to hit enter to return the playhead to the beginning. And now I'm going to press X to open up the mixer. Now the each channel here is represented horizontally, whereas up here they're represented vertically. Now there's an extra couple of channels here, but the one that we want to concern ourselves with is this stereo out one here. So what we're going to do first off is apply something called a compressor. And this is just going to smooth out the differences in volume between the various elements in our audio. So if I click here, go over to uh, dynamics, and then set the compressor and we'll go with stereo. And I'm going to use the vintage uh, VCA. I'll set the threshold to minus 16 dB. Set the ratio to 1. I'm going to leave the makeup as it is. I'm going to turn off auto gain, turn off that auto option there, and I think that's fine. Now we've got information on compression. Uh, this is audio dynamic compression as opposed to file compression, which you'll find on the Podient Creators Hub site. Uh, and a, an easy way to get to that is at podient.co slash learn. So I'm not going to go through the fundamentals of compression, but that's not a bad place to start from. And if you start to get a bit more experience with compression, you can start to fiddle around uh, with those levels and, and, and find the settings that best suit you. And often you might apply compression to individual voice tracks and then overall compression to, uh, to the finished piece. But we're going to keep things fairly simple. The next thing I want to do is add a limiter. And you can see I've used some of these things before, so they're appearing up here. But I want to show you where you actually get to them if you don't have those already. So it's down here in Dynamics again, and it's the limiter. And what I want to do is set the output to around minus 3 dB. What that means is that the audio is never going to rise above minus 3 dB in volume, which is roughly the, the industry standard. Now, there is more of an industry standard which is borrowed from radio, which is something called LUFS. And it's effectively a measure of overall volume of the entire piece of work rather than the little bits of volume at various points within your audio. So what we want to do now is get a rough sort of average of the volume of the track or of the finished audio. And with that, we go down to metering. And then to the loudness meter. And then if I make sure to put the playhead at the start by hit, hitting enter again, I can hit start here. And then when I press play, it's going to start monitoring the levels of my audio. Now, at the moment, it's quite low because of that music being limited to minus 3 dB. And now as the voice comes in, we can start to see how that affects the levels. Now, I've done this before, uh, so I won't take you through the entire thing. And I'm not suggesting you have to listen to the entire piece of audio, by the way. Uh, but I do know that with just those settings the file will roughly come out at about minus 16 dB, which is exactly the level that we want. 
So the industry standard is around minus 16 for LUFs. And that is the average loudness throughout your audio file. So I'm happy with that. That is a pretty good sounding file. So I'm going to press X again to close out the mixer. And if I hit Command A to select everything, and then Command B, this gets us into Bounce. Uh, now, this is basically exporting the audio to a single file. And I'm going to keep these settings as they are. So the important one is I'm going to keep this to a WAV file at the moment, which will be massive, but we'll talk about what you do with that file in just a tick. An important setting is, is keeping the sample rate to 44, 100 kilohertz. And make sure normalization is off because if it's on, that will counteract the minus 3 dB settings that we've set. And we, we don't want to do that because we're quite happy with, with what we've set. So normalizing would actually increase the volume. So once I'm happy with everything, I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to save my file. Call it episode one. So now the computer's just effectively played through and mixed my final audio, which we'll find here. So the file I've created here is a WAV file, which is, it's actually an AIF file, but it's the same kind of thing. It's a lossless file, which means it's not file compressed. It's basically CD quality audio. Most software will play it, but the file is huge. And what we want is an MP3 file. Now, if you're using Podient as your host, you can just upload this massive file if you're happy to use your broadband to do that. And we'll convert it down to an MP3 file for you. If you're using a, a more old fashioned host that makes you do this yourself, then you can use an app like Fission, which is what I'm using here, or Marco Arment's forecast to convert your audio to an MP3 file. We'll cover that in another video, but for now, I just wanted to show you how you can edit a podcast episode in Logic. So at the end there, we exported our file out to uh, a WAV or an AIF file, uh, and then we're later going to convert it to MP3, but you would have seen no doubt in that screencast, there is an option to go directly to MP3. So why didn't I choose that? Well, because Logic is meant for mastering music, by default, it wants to force you into exporting out a stereo because there's no real logical reason why you would want a mono audio file if you're creating music, unless you're doing something really hipster. So a simple way to do that is just to mix your file as stereo, send it out, and then you can export your MP3 file separately as a mono file. The reason I say that is because most podcasts should be in mono. There are exceptions, but as a good rule of thumb, stick to mono because people using smart pe smart speakers or car stereos or listening with one earbud in or using a Bluetooth speaker in the bath, all of these different use cases really need a single channel of audio, not stereo. So I would suggest mixing your audio down to mono. And if you're using Logic, the easiest way to do that, there are other fiddly ways of doing it, but the simplest way to do it is just use another app. So that is a complete, I would say, not exactly whistle-stop tour because it's, uh, it's, it's getting on a bit, but that gives you the basics to get started. So there's lots more information that you can find over at podient.co slash learn. We can also check out our 14-day free trial of the Podient podcast hosting service. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.